Hello and welcome back to MAFT UK. Um, just to let you guys know, my next fishing video is going to be a uh, day after Boxing Day. Um, um, our gang up here are going down to meet uh, the Carp King 71. Um, we're all going to have a little bit of a winter social down near the M25 somewhere. I've never been to the lake before, but apparently it's a good one and we're really looking forward to it. So uh, if you see this, Simon, Chris, um, before we get there, I'm looking forward to it, so see you soon guys. Um, in the meantime, what are we doing? I'm actually 24 hours already into my weekend. Um, it's a bit of a strange one this, because this is the end of uh, a long session of work. And the last day I had off was Remembrance Sunday. Um, and I have, I've worked continuous through then, so last night I stayed at work in the hotel that we're doing, and uh, I went mad. And I had a three course meal, started with venison. Oh, it was absolutely gorgeous. So I've gone from luxury to out in the sticks. Which one would I prefer to be in? <laughs> Here, as much as I loved it last night, um, I started with venison and I had some uh, a mango chicken thing done on a big, huge barbecue, in indoor barbecue uh, that we fitted and um, I ended with some port cheese and crackers obviously prior that I had a few G&T's as I you know as you may have guessed I do like the odd drink now and again and uh, I finished with a bottle of wine <laughs> so if there is an ass to be kicked out of it I, I kicked it out last night um, but it was just starting to rain I may cut this short if I need to get me um, protection up anyway anyway uh, so here I am for the final another 24 hours should I say and I'm just gonna do a hammock hang tonight get a little bit of wood get a fire going I've got some kit to show you the woodwalker 1965 how you doing Wade um, did a little kit hidden woodsman haversack and the day that he was releasing that video the day that I watched it um, I was packing my little walkabout bag and I have a little walkabout bag for when I do just a few hours shoot if I go into the woods for a couple hours I take a little bag with me and it's an old Claymore bag and as I, he was showing me his gear and I was just thinking that's a real coincidence of some of the stuff that he's got in his pack that I had in mine so uh, I'm going to show you that especially for Wade and also Wade I've got some real lovely Lake District beer with me and I'm gonna drink that and I'm gonna toast your health with it mate because <laughs> I you are clearly a person that likes beer so I'm gonna drink that to you I, I wish you could be here to share it with me but unfortunately there you go uh, so I'm also going to show you my kit that I've brought with me now I don't normally do that and the reason I don't do that is because it changes all the time what I carry this weekend may not be what I carry next weekend purely and simply task specific what am I doing what am I going to be up to what's my role for that particular weekend and I will carry my kit according to that so it could be extremely heavy or like this weekend extremely light so let's quickly now before it gets the rain gets any heavier let's turn the camera around I brought an extra ground sheet with me it's an IPK sheet it's an individual protection sheet you can get them for about six pound off eBay they come with cords and really strong um, tent pegs worth every penny I suggest you get one if you can and we're going to turn that round now you will see a MOD British ration pack and you may ask yourself how did I get that because that's for MOD use only and it clearly says it on the box well I've got a friend who it was issued to who didn't use it on the weekend it, once it's issued to him it's his to do what he wants with he gave it to me so I've now got it so that's what I'm doing with a 24 hour wrap pack and we might do a little bit of an unboxing of that later as well and to see what see what we've got it's actually menu 20 and I have no idea what's in the box um, I, I, I do use them when when he doesn't want them so I, it's not a surprise what's contained it within the box but I don't know about that particular menu so we'll, we'll have some fun looking at that so without any delay, let's turn it around. Let's have a look at what I've brought with me this weekend. Here is my kit in its entirety. And what I will do, I will just point you through a few things from distance and we can have a closer look at other things later on. So here we are, the most important of all, on the extreme left here, we have some beer. Two little tins of cider and two tins of Wainwright golden beer. 
I'm really looking forward to trying those uh, once I got everything set up and we're good to go. Uh, moving from left to right then, we have my Ridgeline uh, New Zealand smock. It's probably a autumn smock and I'm, we literally have officially just moved into win winter so I can just about get away with it. Got some Gore-Tex waterproofs. Underneath this kit here is my Bergen liner. My Bergen liner keeps all this gear nice and dry but you will notice it's also individually wrapped, most of it anyway. I have my um, underquilt, my top quilt, shemag, other dry clothing and wash kit in this bag underneath here. This is my small little ground sheet that I put underneath my hammock and here is the kit that I use when I go for a little walk or we're shooting um, and I will show you that later. This is my equivalent to the hover bag that Wade was showing us. Um, as always I always bring, like to bring with me my Boreal 21 folding bow saw which is awesome. My Mora Companion water. We have comms, telephone, I have two mobile phones with me, my one work one and my civvy one. So that is my uh, tarp with its um, guidelines and pegs in the top there. Ye Odi Worldy Rat Pack. Windbreak. I have um, extra fuel for my um, Trangier which is contained within this pack here. Mess tins. First aid kit. Rav power. Always bring extra power for my phones. Diggers, head torch, spare head torch. I always like to carry a spare head torch if something goes wrong, at least I've always got a backup. And a radio to keep me company should I get bored of my own voice, which I regularly do. That is my kit in its entirety. The only other thing is my Bergen. Now, lots of people do lots of videos regarding kit carry Bergens, all sorts of um, Bergens out there to carry their kit around with them. I use this Bergen. This is a British Army PLC personal load carrying equipment. Um, it is without doubt one of my favourite. This is my hump and bump and I throw anything at that and that will carry it and it won't break on me and it's designed to last and it does. It's an excellent piece of equipment. Obviously the only other thing that you can't see is my uh, tripod and camera that I've got. So that's my kit. That's what I carry with me. Um, as I said before, it changes. I, I don't always bring the exact same stuff. A huge thank you to all the recent subscribers and obviously the ones that stay with me. Um, seem to have picked up quite a few lately uh, and I'm really pleased about that. So thank you very much. I just want you to think back now, just to a few seconds ago, to the kit. And I want you to think back to what I was showing you. There was one vital piece of equipment that you need when you go hammock camping. Can you guess what that is? You must always ensure that you bring your hammock. <laughs> I've, I've not brought my hammock. <laughs> I've been that wrapped up in work. I just for, forgot it in my kit. I have no idea where it is. It's probably on the kitchen side or somewhere. But it's not the end of the world because I've got everything I need with me. I brought the extra tarp. Fortunately, I brought the extra tarp and I've got my underquilt and I've got my top quilt and I've got everything else. So I can go ground dwelling. That was a beauty of the ground dweller anyhow. So all is not lost, but I'm not hammocking tonight. I'm actually... Uh, <laughs> going down on the ground. <laughs> I like that. Um, earlier, or oh, in the um, summer, I forgot my tarp during a thunderstorm, and now I forgot my hammock. Now, I can't bluff my way out of that one, I'm afraid. There's just nothing I can do. I can't knock myself up a quick hammock. Stick with it. I'll come up with a cracking idea later on. I don't stay on the ground and it is actually a 67 miles away so I'm not traveling that distance to go and get my hammock so I'll make do <laughs> brilliant 
That's what dreams are made of, isn't it? Eh? <laughs> oh, I'll still have a good night. I'm going to have a fire. I've got my tarp set up differently. I've got all the gear I need. I'm not bothered in the slightest. I just feel a bit stupid, really, but doing a hammock video without a hammock. Hi, Mafti UK, ground dweller. How are you doing? This is similar to what Wade was using. This, however, is not a specified bag or a haversack -a bag at all. It is a Claymore mine bag that um, I got hold of. You would have seen these pouches plenty of times. Now, the thing is, I, I don't like this particular pouch, but I keep ending up using it. I keep, it is turning out to be more useful than I originally thought it was, despite the fact that the zip broke early on. In here we have our Zippo lighter. I have my stove, my little folding up stove, and I have some coffees in there too. So instant coffees, cooker, and fire lighter. Zippo. In the main compartment, is my Trangia with my mini stove. Uh, have a look at one of my videos. Um, you will see this mini stove in action. Uh, put a cup on that, it will work fine. It's just a bent coat hanger. It's not my idea. There was a lad that I, I copied it off YouTube, so it's not my idea, it's someone else's. I should give him the credit, but I can't remember his name, so I can't. So, one Trangia. One Nalgene bottle. And one cup. Clean on the inside. Never mind the out. What have we got going on in the pouch? Well, Baco saw, gloves, and then this side here, which I'm going to be using later as an undersheet, as extra protection, is a poncho. And that's what I carry in this bag. That's that's all I carry in that. And that's pretty much it really, I mean there's not a lot in there, but there is enough to have a brew to keep me dry, um, cut some timber if I need to. Uh, yeah, so I'm quite happy with that little kit. If I'm out for a couple hours shooting, it suits me fine, and that's all that's for. Well it's time to get the Boreal 21 saw, folding bow saw out, and go and get myself some timber, a lot of fallen dead wood this time uh, since I've been here last and that reminds me of a point I should really make more often. Deadfall is a killer. You have to be very careful where you hang your hammock or uh, pitch your tent. You've got to be so careful of deadfall. You can be caught out. There's a, a tree back down there, a big oak, I thought was perfectly healthy, no, no issues with it whatsoever. It's now blocking the normal path and we, and we now have to create a, a new path to get around it. Uh, things like that can just catch you out and despite what you know you never know with the big stuff you never know but above me right here right now are very few if any at all potential deadfall um, just the odd twig or two and if it did fall it would just bounce off me it wouldn't it wouldn't hurt me as opposed to some of the logs that you see lying on the ground in and around this area so always please be careful of deadfall whether you're in a hammock a tent or um just on the ground. <laughs> just dragged down some logs. Now what I need is some standing dead wood to get my small fire going. So let's go and see if we can find some standing dead wood. That bit there, a lot hanging. 
brilliant. It's just about having a look right under your nose. Look at all these. Just fallen from above. Hang in there. Perfect kindling. Oops. Just hang in there, perfect. Right, I think we've got enough now. So there's my basher. <laughs> Not hammock. Um, I've got some big stuff. I need to break down the big stuff now. So as uh, I can get my favorite fire going, which is the upside down fire. Probably got about an hour and a half, maybe two hours worth of real light left. And then I need the head torches. So I just want to make sure all the real hard work's done before it gets dark. should reflect enough heat if I don't go mad with the fire. Let's just remember something, shall we? This is not a survival weekend. This is an old dressing from a first aid kit that's no longer usable because it's past its date. So all I've done is took some methylated spirits, soaked it in methylated spirits, and I'm gonna use that to light my fire. This is not a survival weekend. I'm not practicing those skills today. I'm just having fun, ground dwelling. I've not got my rifle with me today and I bet you I hear foxes, see foxes, deer, everything, it'll all be there, they're sleeping next to me, that's what'll happen. You just know it's going to happen. <laughs> Plenty of deer marks, lots of scrapes, good to see. Plenty about. Right, 24 hour ration pack. Menu 20. What does it look like? What do we get inside? Let's have a look, shall we? Extremely sharp, that knife. Okay, drinks pack. Some crazy fork. Tea, coffee, sugar, instant whitener, and some chewing gum. That's in your drinks pack. The actual large bag that you get as well, that actually acts as your rubbish bag. Let's have a look what else we get. Energy drink. Lemon. Cola flavoured power sugar sweetener. Wow. I've never seen that before. Chocolate flavoured drink. So, hot chocolate. Ooh, what's this? Peanuts. Beverage powder. Okay, I think that's just a high energy thing. Cereal bar. Smooth peanut butter. Mm -mm. Sweet cherry beverage powder. Jeepers. Plenty of beverage powders. Looks like something to feed the birds with. Sesame bar. Toilet roll. Hot sauce. Don't know where they got that idea from. Raisin sultanas and currant mix. Here we go. Main meals. Mexican tuna pasta, 300 grams. 
tuna, lime and pepper. I have no idea what that is. Instant porridge. All right, good, jolly good. Lemon cake. And this is sausage casserole, jolly good. Fruit explosion. Apricot type drinky type thingy malad. And oat digestives. And that is our 24 hour wrap. Fruit explosion, eat your heart out, here we go. Sort of semi refreshing, but I do need a drink after that. <laughs> I would just like to say before I do start this review of this drink that um, that it is Hayes Outdoors' uh, thing, that's what he does, and I don't mean to take that from you. And if should you perchance this video and see me doing this, Mr. Hayes, then uh, it's as a mark of respect as opposed to just copying your idea because I've said your no name enough now, okay. I'm not saying any more. Ray says hi. Here we go. Friels? How would you pronounce that? Friels? Mm, it is 7.4%, so it is quite a strong beer. Expertly crafted in small batches. Rubbish. Refreshingly fruity, medium dry vintage cider crafted exclusively with the first press of a juice from the harvest of the red Falstaff. Sorry, red Falstaff, Katie, and Windsor eating apples. You won't find any artificial flavours or sweeteners, just pure refreshment. All right. Here we go. No glass. This is cider and beer. <laughs> this is not turning out to be my fucking day, is it? <laughs> I'm keeping that in. I'm keeping it in. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see if I can open it another way. Where's my knife? So frails, frails, whatever you want to call it. Here we go. <sighs> Smells like cider. Mm. That's actually very good. And someone I haven't heard from for quite a while is Dimitri. Um, don't know what you're up to mate, I hope everything's alright, I hope you're still a subscriber, but um, uh, how, how's your flute playing going? <laughs> Fire's doing alright. Camp's okay. Can't see a problem. I think we forecast a little bit of rain tonight, but not bothered about a little bit of rain and drizzle, shouldn't bother me. I can always batten down the hatches should it get any worse. Let's have a quick look around the camp, shall we? While we still have enough light, there you will see my layer. Now, now I haven't got a lot of insulation between me and the ground because of my stupidity, but I do have uh, a few layers of visqueen. I've got my poncho. I've got my mini um, ground sheet that I put down under there. I can also put one or two things under before I turn in. And then I've got my doubled over under quilt and then I've got my uh, ground dwellers up quilts. Can't see myself getting too cold this evening. Uh, well, hopefully that I may just have enough insulation from the ground to keep me warm. I've actually had a change of heart. I can, I suppose. That's my prerogative. Um, I am going to use a glass from a beer. This is my stashed glass. I have these hidden all around the place. And of course, I've come to use it 
I need to make sure that it's sterile. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to clean my glass. I'm going to clean my glass. I'm going to have a beer. If you are going to use your lid to stub out your trangia, always make sure that you take the rubber washer out of your trangia. Sometimes that doesn't go out, and if it flares up again, just blow it and it'll go out. But there you go. Just put that to one side now and let that cool. Well, the rain is trying to um, get me, but I'm going to have my ration pack tea this evening instead of my venison that I had from my starters yesterday. Um, I have absolutely no idea about this pepper, lime pepper sauce. I mean, I presume it's supposed to go with this tuna pasta. I, I genuinely don't know. I don't even know it's supposed to be hot. I've never had it before. I presume it's a sauce. But I'll tell you what, it's rather delicious. I'm not quite sure how you're supposed to have that. But I do know what I'm having it with. And here we go. This Wainwright's <coughs> Cumbrian Ale is a golden beer, so it's a light, not pale ale as such, but So here we go. If I look at the camera, this happens. Yeah. So, cheers, Wade. I like your videos. Oh, that's really hoppy and lovely and scrummy and beery and not heavy. I'm really pleased with that, and equally so, I'm really pleased with my dinner too. I shall eat this and join you shortly. idea. Well, there we go. This is what I've done. I've used the ground sheet that I was actually sat on the ground and I've turned that into a hammock.
What I've done, I whipped that end there, whipped that end there up, and then folded it over, put the loop on the knot, and then tied another loop here, so it's sort of like trapping, trapping everything in and not stopping it from sliding. And I just had whatever power cord I had, cobbled it all together, and uh, made some slings with it. Uh, I'm a big lad. Now I know that power cord will take 300 pounds. Breathable. I'm still. I'm going to sweat a little bit. Condensation, but it'd be far, far better than sleeping on the floor. Whatever, whatever you say. So let's give that a go. Let's hope it works, and I'll just try and keep it still as fuck while I'm inside. <laughs> but there you go. The tarp's back up. I had to bastardise a bit there as well because I didn't have quite enough power cord so what I did was I, I had some of this here I, I knew I had some further up on the tree up the road so what I did I uh, put my short lengths on as opposed to continuous line so it's just dangling down on my prusik loops there and I've just done a half hitch to that that should hold there's not a lot of tread strain on the back there we are. Will that suffice? Will that work for me tonight? A homemade hammock. <laughs> Out in the bush. Well, let's see here we go. <laughs> yeah, I made a hammock at night. I'm quite proud of that to be honest. <laughs> Yeah. So what do you think, Steve? Did the boy do okay? <laughs> so there you go. The winner, obviously, again, is this tremendous top quilt from UK Hammocks. Absolutely fantastic. And last night, there wasn't a breath of wind. There wasn't a single sound it was so quiet you could almost you could literally hear your own heartbeat it was that quiet it was incredible incredible i've never known a night so quiet ever so still okay what we're going to do now we're going to reverse engineer what i created last night um, the first thing i need to do is put away my top quilt because that doesn't form any structural part of the system at all. So let's get that away. Now we need to look at the uh, under quilt protector. Um, we're gonna, I need to look in close at that because you'll see some sticks and it may look as if that sticks are actually holding everything up, but they're not. I'll, I'll just show you exactly what I mean. Okay. The under quilt protector hangs usually on the end of the hammock there but the way I've got this set up I couldn't do that so what I needed to do was figure out another way so I, I made a loop there put a knot in there able to put a stick through able to put a stick through once that stick was through I could then hang everything off it and I did that at both ends so that's how I suspended the under quilt and under quilt protector off the hammock. Now on to how I created the gathered end. Um, it looks relatively neat. It is neat and it worked a treat. What I did, let's reverse engineer it. Let me show you what I did. Well, first and foremost, we need to untie this little bit here. Okay. What that did was fold it over the gathered end and if you look at what I did then I looped my suspension system through the gathered end folded it over and then whipped it gathered end now then that's just concertinaed
So that's just concertina folded in sections. So. Again, my power cord folded into fours, looped and hooked around a tree. Doesn't get any simpler than that. To be fair, this can still be used. It's just, it's just folded in four. I can unfold it and that can go back to being my ridge line again. I did have to cut some power cord, but if you carry enough with you, and you've always got enough with you, and you've always got a, uh, a couple of hanks just lying in the bottom of your Bergen, you never know when it's gonna come in handy. And that proved itself to be so true last night. Just sitting there on the ground thinking, there must be a better way. I must be able to do something better than what I've got. And then the penny dropped. And that's how I ended up making a hammock with a ground sheet, sleeping in it all night and was as comfortable as Larry. So I'm really pleased with the result. Um, I hope you found that interesting because you may find yourself in a similar situation. I really hope you don't, don't because uh, that was rather stupid of me. So there we go. We've gone from five star luxury accommodation and dining to hammocking without a hammock, <laughs> hammocking with a hammock, and finally breakfast from the hammock. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, it was interesting, wasn't it? So join me again next time, and we'll see other nonsense I get up to. And, and I want to add my final word is, I did not intentionally forget my hammock. Absolutely not. That was a genuine balls up. See you next time. Bye-bye.